Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a really interesting topic to discuss. They've been doing some testing in Europe to try and figure out a great way to put out a lithium ion battery fire in an electric vehicle. But before we get into the details, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any EV safety or fire safety news in the future. So you arrive on scene and you find you've got an electric vehicle on fire and that high voltage battery is involved. Now remember, if the high voltage battery is not involved, it's a typical vehicle fire. A few hundred gallons of water, it'll go out, no issue. But if that battery is involved right now, we're saying let it burn. But are there other methods out there? What can we do? Because letting it burn might not always be an option. Think of a fire in a parking garage, way underground, shipping vessels, a car ferry, these are areas where it becomes very difficult to just let these vehicles burn and you've got to intervene somehow, at least until you can get that vehicle out of the structure. These are scenarios that keep chiefs up at night. Thankfully, there's a lot of research being done in this area to try to figure out more efficient ways of putting out these fires. Now let's get into the details of the studies. The first study is a Swedish study and what they're looking at is what happens if we put water directly into the battery pack. Can that stop a thermal runaway? If you're familiar with some of my other content, you'll know that Renault, a French auto manufacturer, they actually have a firefighter's access in their battery box. It's typically located under the rear seat of the vehicle and allows firefighters to put water directly into the battery if there's a thermal runaway, stopping the fire. Now in the Swedish study, they actually look at different methods of getting water inside the battery pack. They started their testing off with small scale packs outside of the vehicle and they slowly increased the size of the battery pack. And what they found was getting water inside of that battery pack was effective at stopping the fire. They only needed about seven gallons per minute, so not a huge flow of water inside the pack to stop the thermal runaway. But looking at this study, there are some issues. Number one, how do you get water in the battery pack? Now for this study, they had a variety of different methods that they tried. My favorite is the Cobra system, which uses a high pressure water jet to actually cut the metal on the vehicle and injects water directly into the battery pack. My least favorite and the method I would highly recommend against, do not do this, it's a terrible idea, is using a pick head ax to punch a hole in this battery pack. And if you watch this video, you can see as they're doing this, they're causing additional thermal runaway events while they're making the hole. Not a great idea and fairly unsafe to do. Now the second study appears to come from a Nordic shipping company. And what they're trying to do is find out if there's a way to safely extinguish an electric vehicle fire when you've got these large cargo ships full of potentially electric vehicles. Or if you start looking at ferries where you have multiple vehicles and passengers on board trying to get them from one location to another. That would be the worst case scenario for a fire to break out in an electric vehicle. In this case, they used a very unique method. They used what they called brine, a saltwater mixture. And because of this, because of the properties of the fluid, they're actually able to reduce the temperature significantly. Get that down to about negative 19 degrees Celsius. In this test, they used a Renault Zoe and they caused it to go into thermal runaway. They hit this vehicle from two different angles. Number one, they had a sprinkler above the vehicle to contain the fire into that vehicle. The second thing they did was break out all the windows and insert a special nozzle into the passenger compartment of the vehicle. Flooded it with that brine solution, that salt water solution at negative 19 degrees Celsius. What they found was they were able to extinguish the vehicle within about an hour. Now realize, I've already hit on it before, but that Renault Zoe has a special feature in it. It has a firefighter's access. There's two questions I have. Number one, did the water just flood itself into that firefighter's access, flooding the battery, extinguishing the battery? Or number two, because it did burn for an hour, did it just burn through all the material in that battery box anyway? Two big questions I have. I'd love to see a final report on this experiment. One last comment on using salt water to extinguish an electric vehicle fire. It goes back to Hurricane Ian and some of the other natural disasters we've seen. Salt water can cause those batteries to go into thermal runaway after the fact. So now you flood this battery or you've exposed these battery cells to salt water, 
and a day later, a week later, if you look at one instance from Hurricane Ian, 308 days later, you have a vehicle fire because that salt water infiltrated the battery and caused major issues after the fact. Now looking at both of these studies, I think they have some promise and they should push us to more and better experimentation in the future. But some limitations with these experiments. For example, these tests need to be done on a large cross-section of vehicles. We need multiple tests. We need repeatable tests. A test that's a one and done might give you a little bit of information, but it doesn't show the whole picture. Unless you can repeat a test and have the same results or similar results, the test isn't really that valuable. Vehicle construction is a big one. You look at the Renault Zoe. That's a fairly small battery pack, about 55 kilowatt hours. When you start looking at American electric vehicles, we're almost double that in certain instances. So battery size, that makes a difference. The types of cells that are in there, the way these packs are designed, every pack's a little bit different. For example, going back to the Tesla Model Y, a completely foam filled pack, it's not really gonna be the same as a pack where you've got all the cells in there and great access for water flow through the pack. It's clear that EV safety is an ever evolving field and there's a lot of testing that still needs to be done in this area. Full scale testing. That's one project I'm working on with UL Fire Safety Research Institute. I'm looking forward to seeing these vehicles burn and learning more about them as we look at different ways to extinguish these fires.